interesting one. Uh, mon money, charging money and being a spiritual teacher. Charging money and being a spiritual teacher. Charging lots. Yes, yeah, some. There's a spiritual. <laughs> I was asked the question. Uh, a, a spiritual teacher is charging two thousand pounds for one of his, one of his seminars, something like that. Um, and what do I think of that? Well, I think um, there's diff there's you know there's different levels of there's different levels of consciousness, and at different levels of consciousness, different things can happen. Uh, around money, um, the very advanced teachers, the you know like Hawkins, I think there's a level of consciousness when you go into the observer, and when you're one, where you totally let go of the meaning of money, and you just uh, whether you whether you, and in that let, let's talk about that. So when Hawkins went off, he had this white light spiritual experience. He went off to Sedona, into a little wooden cabin, and. Um, and uh, he just, uh, he was just there and he would, uh, he didn't need, he, ha he didn't have any hunger, but he would just walk out or, and, and it would like, people would offer him some biscuits or people would offer to him to buy lunch or whatever it would be. And it was like uh, the universe just somehow provide, whenever the body needed food, the universe would provide it, kind of thing happened. And I remember there was a story with Muji where he, I think he'd become unemployed and he went out and then someone just offered him a banana. And it was like, when you just totally surrender, whether you live or die, mm -hmm. and it's up to the universe, and you're at those very advanced states and you've transcended even the need for money, even the need to be alive and to make money so that the body, you know, the body has food, you even transcend that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's up to the universe then. Either the universe gives food because you've transcended it, whether the body lives or not, or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So if, probably for some of them, like Ramana, Ramana Maharishi uh, went into the state of enlightenment, and his just body was just there on the floor with flies eating him up, you see, flies eating him up. So in that state, you know, if, no, if, no hum if, it, wasn't the, the, um, if it wasn't the will of the universe mm -hmm. to put some spiritual seekers to come and find him and recognize that he's in a spiritual state, then you know he'd have just left the body, and that would be that. And it wouldn't matter to him because he wasn't the body; he wasn't, he wasn't identified with the body. Yeah. But it was the universe's will, at that level of consciousness, that he be found and that he be fed, and that he be a spiritual teacher. And it was the universe's will with Hawkins that people would just offer him biscuits and stuff. He also wasn't that great, you know, and doing things. So that he got a wife as well, who would, would organize things uh, for him and um, and do things because. He would be quite. Um, he wouldn't be quite identified with the world that much. So it's like the universe had a role for him. I think at different levels of consciousness, um, uh, uh, different things can happen. There can be a, an aspect of ego, but very little, mm. or there can be a calling as well that money is needed to do something. Mm. And and the, I think there could be a charge at certain levels of consciousness, like. There's a calling at certain levels of consciousness to need money, to do things in the world. It shouldn't really, at high levels, it probably wouldn't be for an ego need. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be, uh, you know, it might be for some other need. Um, and uh, I think at lower levels of consciousness, then the fear and the identity comes more into play. So it might be then uh, you might charge uh, a lot of money. I, um, you know, in these groups, I mean, I, I, I go by dona donation, and uh, my, own, my own thing of thing is like, uh, you know, the universe responds from, um, uh, it's like, actually, I, you know, it's very, very funny, I'm in a 12-step group, and I gave a chair about money today, it's so funny you're asking about that. Uh, and uh, and I was trying to sort of, sh I had this thing, you know, I was going to share, and I didn't get to share all of it. You know, I found like when I after um, after I had my kidney failure, this thing around money, there was all I had so much better because I was in the stock market. That's how much money was special to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then it's, and then I had the near death spiritual experience. Then Hawkins' work, and he was talking about being spiritual. That's the way to to live and get out of you know these horrible rock bottoms. And I remember um, 
and I would never do anything for anybody. It was just me all the time, me, me, me. And uh, I'd get these things through the letterbox for charities to like collect money, go door to door and collect. Like, would you like to give some money for the you know the people with cancer or whatever? And it's like I don't want. I mean, it's my ego didn't want to do that, but I thought I have to be spiritual now. So I'd go off and I'd knock on the doors, and when I'd ever do that to my ego's resentment that I was doing this, but I needed to be spiritual to live. And I'd get a phone call, I was a hypnotherapist at the time, a client would ask me for, for a session. Every time I'd go out, so it's like the universe would give me money when I'd try and earn money for the universe, if that made sense. Mm -hmm. And I remember once, um, when I was a hypnotherapist in my early days, and I would always be thinking about the money. You know, and I took the course because you could charge two hundred and fifty pounds just to help you stop smoking. And uh, and I was always thinking like, oh, I hope they pay, I hope they pay. You know, and uh, and uh, and then one day I had this lady, and um, uh, she was seventy years old, and she had Alzheimer's. I was going to give her hypnosis, um, and this is a true story. And I was really like after the money with all my clients. I wanted to give the, do a good job, but I was also interested in getting the money in. And this lady, and she was 70 years old, and you have to put her into a state of trance and then give her a suggestion. I thought, I'm not 100% sure if she's got Alzheimer's, how effective. She can't remember. You know, she can't remember anything. I'm, I'm not sure. I've just taken 250 pounds of this woman. And I don't well, normally have... Remember. <laughs> Are you supposed to, like, tell her... You're going to be a non-smoker, and you'll be a non-smoker for the rest of your life in hypnosis. And she can't remember anything, you know. And so, this is true. And I was like, this is a true story. And I was like, I was, had an office above Warren Street tube station. And, you know, because I have my door number, and I was hearing the bells for the other things going around the thing, because she didn't remember what, what was going, you know. And she came up, and I took the money off of her. I was supposed to like hypnotize her for stop smoking. And I just normally with most clients, as soon as I get the money, you know, it's my money. <laughs> you know, you give it, I've got to give you the service. No. And then I had this feeling of like, you know, she, she's, 70, she's 70 years old, so <laughs> she got, she's got Alzheimer's. You've just taken her money and you just like put her in trance and told her not to smoke. Did she you actually know? put her in trance? Yeah, yeah I put her oh, in trance. Oh, you did? Well, oh. trance is just a relaxed state. Yeah, 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 sure. So she left anyway, and I, I had the money, and I thought, you can't stoop so low as to like <laughs> to get like money off a 70-year-old woman with Alzheimer's, even if that's too low for you. <laughs> you know, so, 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 I, uh, so I never did this with any of my other clients, but I rang her up the next day. <laughs> it was a true story. I rang her up, and I was, I was prepared, you know, like, for her to say, like, oh, I, you know, I'm smoking, you know, and say, look, it's okay, don't worry. I'll, I'll offer you a, a refund. <laughs> so I called her up, this is true, and she said, that's great, you know, I've stopped smoking. <laughs> she said, it's great, it's great. And, well, who are you, my <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she, didn't say, she didn't say that. But she, she was so... I, she didn't say that. She'd start, she'd, start, she'd start smoking. But I'm sure it was like, it was an act of love for me to, like, care for her. She couldn't remember. If she stopped or not, could she? <laughs> she did. She did. <laughs> she did. <laughs> this is a true story. You, she did. And she was my best. Look, she was my best client ever. She told her neighbor, her daughter, oh, wow. everyone. Sabir, did she just maybe forget to smoke then? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the purpose, the purpose of hypnosis, is to get them to, to let go. Well, she her. did smoke and she couldn't remember that she had smoked. Anyway. She, was, she was my best client ever. I mean, she referred the most people ever. Her daughters, her neighbours, everything. And, and that, that's the thing of, um, <coughs> of do. So that was, and I was trying to make a point about money, because yeah, the topic was about money and wanting to fear around money. And, 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 uh, and that for me was because I had a lot of, I wanted the money, I was greedy, I was, had fear around money. But that one act, I think the universe responded, you know, in, in her being the biggest, yeah, she, she referred the most clients to me in my hypnotherapy. This, the 70-year-old lady with Alzheimer's, yeah. True story. Um.